championship. Introducing the champion from Dorchester, New Brunswick, weighing 236 pounds, Leo Burke. And the challenger in this match is from New Orleans, weighing 227 and one half pounds, the hustler Rip Rogers. And he is accompanied in the ring by his manager, Jonathan Holliday. Your referee for this match, Bernie Richard. International championship match right here on ATV. Joining me at ringside, none other than Bob Brown. Now listen. All you have to do is sit there and call me the bulldog because I am, I am the bulldog. I am the best. I'm one half of the North American Tag Team Champions. In front of me is the International Heavyweight Wrestling Belt. And before the night's out, Hustler Rip Rogers and his manager, Jonathan Holliday, will be wearing that belt. But I can't help but think that you can sit here, Mr. Announcer, and watch out what's been going on in the last 15 minutes. Now you saw Paul Teller rush to the ring with a big stick. He's a criminal. He's an insane man. And he belongs in the mental institution. And you can sit here and talk to your so-called shut-ins and say that everything is all right. I just can't believe I'm sitting to an ignorant-looking announcer like yourself making all those stupid statements. Well, it certainly looked good watching you get that piece of wood over the back of your head. I was kind of pleased about it. Actually, it looked good. And then, to make matters even better, the next matchup, Jonathan Holliday gets what he has coming to him. Big Steven Petipaldi positive rid of him in fine fashion. Yeah, yeah, but you saw what happened. He was all over Steven Petipaldi. He had Steven Petipaldi beat three or four times. The referee failed to count because he's a hometown boy. But watch out for this match now. I tell you, as I'm sitting here, and as God is my witness, I know down deep that Hustler Rip Rogers is going to come out here victoriously. Well, I'll tell you right now, if he does, I wouldn't be surprised if that man right there, Holiday, has something to do with it. But you know something, Brown? The last time we were talking, we were talking about those belts that you're still looking to get back, and you don't have them. Right now, they're having a meeting in the dressing room. It'll just be a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, and they're talking about And I heard through the grapevine from well good sources that they've already agreed to give it back to me and show me. Well, uh, you know, I'm at odds about it because I didn't see the tag. I talked to fans. I talked to officials around. The commission is meeting right now as we discuss this. But, you know, all I can say is I've seen a count of one, two, three. And that's good enough for me. Well, no, of course it's good enough for you because, you see, you haven't been around wrestling. You don't know what wrestling is One, two, three, about. and you win. Well, yeah, that's what you think. That's what well, you let do. Let me tell you something. I've been around for 17, 18 years, and let me tell you, that's why the people write those letters in to tell Bulldog Bob Brown, please stay at the table and don't let anybody interrupt you. I'm doing you a favor by sitting next to you to please. give you the good things please. about professional wrestling. Please, Brown. Come on, please. Right now, Leo Burke's doing a good thing to Hustler Rick Rogers. What about the fist? Referee standing by watching. Open you know? fist. Oh. What match are you watching this Nice knee after? drop right to the side of the head. Stop on those fingers. Out of the way, boy. Another one. Leo Burke now taking the upper hand in this match. There's Rogers grabbing that hair Brown was talking about earlier. Bulldog Bob Brown. Former international tag team champion. Oh, no, just a minute now. You say former. Or, You've got no rights to say that because a, de a decision hasn't been made. Well, at the time, they're upheld. You're not the champion, <laughs> yeah, you're former. But they, you said the former. What happens when they give us the belts back? You'll be champion. Well, okay. So you should say the title's held up at the present time, and they are no champions. See, don't no be, champions. Listen, don't be biased about it. The last time I seen anything, you were getting beat in the ring. You don't have the belts. You're former. When they give no, it back to you, you're the champion. No sense talking to you. You're one of those other guys like Leo Burke and Steven Pettipaw. They think they know everything. And what happens? They get burnt. They get their eyes burnt. And they get a lot of other things that's going to happen to them. High pass off the road, Leo Burke. Another high pass down goes Rogers into the iron bar. Leo Burke applies pressure. We've had some exciting matches the last number of weeks 
right here on ATV. We've had international tag team matches. Now let me stop you right there. We have had exciting matches, but the reason behind the exciting matches is, is Bulldog Bob Brown being at this table and explaining to the fans what they're seeing in the ring. It certainly been, hasn't been exciting listening to you because you don't know what two and two is or four and four. You're a biased individual. You like Emil Dupree and you like the referees and you like Steven Tedepa and Leo Burke. You're all biased when it comes to true athletes like Brown, Rogers, and Holiday and Chono. All I do is tell what I see right now. I see Leo Birkenier leveling Hustler, Rip Rogers, and down again, Bray. I'm not biased. I call it the way I see it. Bulldog Bob Brown out here throwing cheers around, getting involved with the fans, and you wonder why people get after you the way they do. I don't worry about the wrestling fans whatsoever. If they want to get involved, let them step in the ring. And let me tell you something about getting involved in wrestling matches. You people in Anakinish, you people in Bridgewater, you people in Berwick, and you people in Halifax, and you people all over New Brunswick. All you people want to do is get a part of Bulldog Bob Brown. Well, let me remind you something. Once you put your hands on me, you're mine. Whether you're a wrestler or a spectator, keep your hands off me because you'll pay the price like Paul Peller. You'll be blinded. Well, Paul Peller sees well enough to work his way into the ring on today's card and use a nice, great big bat on the back of Bulldog Bob Brown. That draws a rise to this capacity crowd here. Yes, he snuck in the back door. He snuck in to commit a <laughs> criminal act, and that's what he did. If anybody on the street did what Paul Peller did, they would go to jail approximately from two to five years. But no, he gets away with it, and the referee didn't even call him. He should have been fined. What about you trying to blind somebody? It's not illegal. I'm only protecting myself and defending myself. Out of two and a half. That was close call. Why don't you tell him now what Rip Rogers is doing to Leo Burke? You haven't said a word. That's where Rip Rogers delivers a close fist smash to the jaw there. The only thing you're talking about is those crazy shut-ins. Count of two. Another count of two. Burke breaks out of that hole. Digging down, digging into that insurance. Catching his second win now, Leo Burke. Ball lock, Bob Brown here at the table. I'm going to call... Jonathan Holiday over here, and I'm going to ask him just what you reminded me of. What do you think now that Hustler Rip Rogers is he playing with Leo Burke, and at any time he can beat him if he at wanted to? Any time he can beat him if he wanted to. The officials, my God, on their counts are so slow. He goes, one, I'm going to get a plane ticket to Florida. He goes, two, I'm getting a plane ticket to Bermuda. And then by the time he gets to three, Leo Burke could have went home and had dinner. This is ridiculous. I can't take this much longer, and if I have to, I'll knock Leo Burke out myself. Well, now thank two. you, Jonathan Holiday, for those fine words. Now that's coming straight from the horse's mouth, and he's around ringside, and he's seeing what's going on. So hey, what can I tell you? He's playing with Leo Burke right now. Vance, he's biased. He's paid under the same paycheck the Hustler Rip Rogers is. Don't listen to a word he's saying. Count of one, two, two and a half, kicked out. Leo Burke had lots of time. Hustler Rip Rogers has just not been able to put it away. Brown, you got to admit, he's had seven or eight good chances. Yeah, but you're not talking about it. Over now, we got a chance here. Battle one, two, three, four, yeah. five. No, you saw his shoulder was up. Outside, Jonathan Holiday again interfering in the matches. What's new? Bob Brown wants to know why a guy doesn't get upset once in a while. Right you, should now. you should never get upset. You should worship the ground I walk on, Mr. Announcer, because if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be at this table for 30 seconds. Well, I've been hired to do a job, and that's what I'm doing right now. Leo Burke's taking a beating right here. He had a chance to put the match away and walk away with the belt. Holiday interfering. Holiday now outside, taunting the fans. Rogers applies that boot to the neck. Rogers, the holiday interfering in the match, bro. What are you going to say about that? See that? No, he didn't interfere. He's, no, he took he's, he's pushing Leo Burke into the ring. Can't he you see what's touching. going on? He shouldn't touch it. Nothing to do with this match. Rogers now. Burke looks dazed. Burke catches a shot to the side and hit another one. That's a third. Burke melts to the floor. 
catches a boot now to the midsection. Leo Burke looks like he's in trouble. That belt could be a jeopardy. Jeopardy? It's been a jeopardy since they both walked in the ring. I would say Rip Rogers had the upper hand for the last 15 minutes. But dropped him down hard. He dropped him down in an area. Whoa! Leo Burke can hardly get up. I think he's giving in. I think he told the referee, I give, I give. I'm sure Rip Rogers. Leo Burke coming out of hard shot. Another one. There we go, off the ropes. Rogers gets tangled up. Leo Burke. Now can apply a few of those shots to the forehead that he's so pleasantly delivered on. Jonathan Holliday around the arena. Yeah, he's tied up in the ropes. The referee's carried on and didn't even bother breaking it. He broke it off the ropes. Catches it hard. Down goes Holiday. Rogers catches the knee to the side of the head. Count of two. Action heating up. There he goes. Count of one. Count of one and a half. Kick two. Both wrestlers have had ample opportunity. Block shot there. Reply by Burke. Another one. Another one. Down he goes. I can't believe what's happening to him. Way higher into that turnbuckle. Burke working him over. Tosses him in the center of the ring. Burke misses on the drop kick. Rogers now picks him up, spins him off the rope. He has him in that sleeper hole. He has him in the sleeper hole. He has him in that sleeper hole. Coming in. Leo Burke being assaulted here in the center of the ring now. By Richard. The qualification. Now out of nowhere, Chinoco catches him with a drop kick. Catches him with a boot to the side of the head. Leo Burke. Working him over. Wade Gillison to the date. Total mayhem. Oh, this match to Kirkland. Hustler Rip Rogers has been disqualified.